Welcome back to Optimal Play. There's a new Mythos pack for Arkham Horror, the card game, in the Clutches of Chaos, and we're here again to review the player cards that just came out. My name is Brandon. I'm Steven. And I'm Casey. Uh, that's right. We have our first ever special guest on our first impressions. How's it going, Casey? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Good, good to have you. You may know Casey if you happen to have met him before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Mr. Trench. Uh, perhaps you're familiar uh, with the handle more than me. Um, yeah, you're in various uh, community circles for, yeah. uh, around the card game or other parts of geeky internet. Mm -hmm. And you assure me that you're one of the foremost experts on Arkham Horror the Card Game. So that's why I invited you here. I'm expecting to be dazzled. Uh, I think that's going to need a citation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely have thoughts and opinions, so I think I'm more than qualified to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the cards, shall we? That's all it takes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, if you haven't checked out Optimal Play lately, we've done a lot of... Uh, we're ba I'm back from vacation. <laughs> the videos have been flowing again. Uh, we've done some Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth, which has been an eventful campaign so far. So yeah. check that out if you're interested. Um, if you enjoy these videos or other... Fantasy Flight or just other games, we're here most weeks putting out new videos. Please subscribe and we hope you enjoy. Uh, usually we like to start off by revisiting the last pack, which was called... For the Greater Good? No, no, no. No, no. Uh, the Union and Dissolution. Dissolution. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, so uh, Casey's actually the senior uh, pack name rememberer uh, on Optimal Play. <laughs> yes. Important new position. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so we like to revisit a card from the previous pack. Uh, Steven, anything that, from the last pack that you played with that you either changed your mind about or just got some experience with? Uh, so the only card I actually played with was Investments, um, but it was pretty good in my Dark Horse Preston um, because you know it let him build up some resources without turning off Dark Horse. Um, and then I just had that extra burst at the end to, to do kind of a power turn. Um, so I remember having that extra money was important for like Streetwise and other things I was trying to get done. Uh, near the end, um, so I would recommend it for Dark Horse Preston, uh, for for rich money hoarder Preston. Um, I don't know that the extra actions are worth it because you have to like spend an action to play mm -hmm. it, spend another action to take the money off, and you have to spend an action to take the money off your inheritance. So I think because the money hoarder Preston has to like take money off, it might not make sense. Um, right. But for the Dark Horse version, you know, you, you're generally not spending actions to take money off. I think it's fine. I also think I could see it also in like a rich Danny build too. Sure. Um, I did try it out in a Finn deck also and really liked it. Like, mm -hmm. as long as it's going to be a reasonably. So, I, I think I mostly agree with what I said last time that it needs to be an early game draw mm -hmm. because mid game to late game, it's yeah not worth the, the actions just to get a burst of resources in what is probably the last round of the mm -hmm. game. But um, it's great in any situation where you are going to need a big burst of resources. Mm -hmm. Whether the scenario requires you to pay a bunch to parlay someone, or you have cards in your deck uh -huh. with a really high cost, um, I'd recommend it in any of those situations at the very least. So yeah, it's something I'm looking forward to play more of. Yeah, you tried investments out, Casey? Not a ton. How often do you wait to collect the maximum return on your investments? I think I did collected it last it? turn. You always wait for the end. I've never or the max. I never made it to ten. I think the <laughs> highest was seven or eight. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's not, yeah, you look at it and you're like, 10 resources for one, mm -hmm. it's not quite that much, but still, I think if, as long as you make it past five, it's a great econ card, mm -hmm. right? Like it needs to make it to at least, I think it needs to make it to five to be like on even grounds with um, emergency cash. Exactly, like, yeah. You have to get at least wise. four because it's an extra action compared to emergency cash. So. Right, well, mm -hmm. and it costs a resource. That's why, yeah, yeah. That's why five, I think. Yeah, is well, no, I mean a four profit. You know, if oh. it's a three profit, that's okay. an extra action compared to cash. So. Right. Um, yeah. But even if you are only getting it to be equal to emergency cash, there are plenty of times when you wish you had a third and fourth emergency cash mm -hmm. in your deck mm -hmm. and would be happy to play it. So, yeah, yeah great card. Mm -hmm. um, I spent some time trying to make telescopic sight work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can tell from that intro how well it went. Um, I really love the idea of playing like a sniper archetype. I tried it in Roland because I especially loved the idea of being able to pick off enemies from the location where I wanted to discover extra clues, not necessarily being um, confined to like hoping that the monsters spawn where those clues already are. Mm -hmm. I, I can, can make that happen more. But 
I tried pairing it with, uh, so I built 29 XP decks. I played some two-handed solo, Guardians of the Abyss. Everything was, like, I set it up as perfectly as I could. I put in um, the level 3 Tommy Gun. Mm -hmm. I paired him with Finn so that Finn could have those extra actions to evade enemies and have them stay a location away in the ideal spot. Just couldn't make it work. It's so expensive to play a two-handed gun, of which there are only a few options, and they're all expensive in both experience and resources. Mm -hmm. And then the telemetric, telescopic sight, excuse me, is another three resources. Other attachments add up. And then the, the restrictions on this thing. I have it in front of me because this card has eight lines of text, but has to be on a two-handed weapon. It can then no longer be used on enemies engaged with you. And since it's a two-handed weapon, it's you have to have a bandolier to even have like a machete or something as a backup. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden you're at a three, uh, if you count the gun and the side, a four-card combo just to be like able to do okay. And then the kicker to me was, I almost didn't realize this, I'm sure I didn't realize this the last time we talked about the card, but you have to exhaust the telescopic sight to use its ability. Mm -hmm. So you can't even like fire twice to take out mm -hmm. a three or four hit point yeah. enemy. And it just... It, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> yeah. And then Guardians of the Abyss is even like it's a kind of um, like wheel and spokes shaped map to where monsters would or enemies would spawn on the outsides and Roland could just sit in the center and shoot at any of them. And it was the ideal setup and I could not make it feel like it was worth my while. So mm -hmm. if anyone has a great telescopic sight deck, I would love to hear about it in the comments because I really like the idea of the card <laughs> and I want it to work. But so far, it's it's a... <laughs> It's a no from me. <laughs> so you just need the upgraded bandolier, and then you have two mm -hmm. two-handed weapons, yep. and you exhaust each of them mm -hmm. to get two hits on the enemy who's coming towards you. Or this is my face-to-face -face Tommy gun, and this is my long-range Tommy gun. There we go. <laughs> or you just use the Springfield, which has the built-in sight, basically. And, and I did. This is all why I felt like 29 XP was pretty much the, the lowest I could go mm -hmm. and make this work, because also the telescopic sight is 3 XP per copy. Yeah. All the two-handed guns cost XP. I wanted to pair it with reliable and well-maintained and really try to make the whole piling on attachments and getting the Tommy gun back, mm -hmm. all that to work. It just costs so much experience that if you're playing a campaign, you're not even going to get this deck built until the sixth scenario at best, probably. And then then it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So big disappointment. I would love to see here if someone's made it work. But, but yeah, I kind of wish it was 2 XP so that like skids could take it. Like It'd be interesting to see skids just trying to like run away from enemies. But like if they do get close, you pick them off. Um, but yeah, it's because it's 3 XP, it's really just Guardians. Yeah, and I wish that, um, honestly, I wish it was zero so someone like Jenny could, even though it doesn't flavorfully make sense on her two-handed guns, right? Because mm -hmm. her, her signature guns are two-handed. Yeah, the Hitman Silver Baller is going to put scales on. But uh, anyways, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so dual-wielding pistols, uh, probably not great. <laughs> so it's telescopic sights. I think it's got a solid place in a marker Leo deck because they have lots of tricks and tactics for removing enemies or moving yourself away from enemies. I, Roland is just too slow. Maybe so. I, it just all seems too expensive. And then once I had it in play, too restrictive. I don't know. I didn't even get a chance to like pair Warning Shot with it, which I put in the deck. But I just didn't get a situation where the enemy was on me mm -hmm. and I could Warning Shot it away and then kill it because it would have taken two shots to kill it and it would have just jumped back on me. Mm -hmm. It was... Yeah, I guess Leo could do Cat Burglar in it. Leo can scoot away, think mm. on your feet. Mark can... Uh... Okay. Do a lot of the same because those are tactics, I believe. Yeah, although Roman could right? take a shortcut. But then just that to get. just moves you away, but you're still engaged. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. That, that All that just to get one shot off. Like, oh, you yeah, have to no, be a weak enemy, too. Yeah, no, it's <sighs> it's not really worth all the trouble. <laughs> no, sadly. Um, I probably will try again. I'll probably try some of these ideas. I, I do, think Cat Burger might be the best. I, it's a good Cat point. That's a good point. Paired with green cards, it might do better, but. Capitalers and my Leo sniper. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, so, so, so you've tried it out? Did it I have theory crafted with it. I haven't oh. actually gone into the oh, table okay. yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, brainstorming for a Gen Con, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to hearing how that goes. Mm -hmm. All right, should we get to the reason we're all here? Yeah. In the Clutches of Chaos. Did I get that right? I oh, keep wanting to say four. In the Clutches of Chaos. Just <laughs> right. stop trying to say it and you'll have it right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to defer to you every time. We did, uh, we did give you that title, so... Mm -hmm. uh, starting off with a bang, <laughs> the first card in the pack is the Mark I Grenades, I think is how you pronounce MK, right? Yep. Mark I Grenades. It is a level 4, 
three cost guardian asset. It's an item, it's a weapon, and it's ranged, but it takes up no slot. Mm -hmm. uh, uses three supplies. If the grenades have no supplies, discard it. Action, spend one supply, fight. You get plus two combat for this attack. If this attack is successful, instead of its standard damage, this attack deals two damage to each enemy and each other investigator at your location. Any additional damage is dealt to the attacked enemy. Um, any additional? Oh, I see. Okay. As, so if your you vicious use, blows, etc. Gotcha. Uh, cool. It's like it's a miniature but reusable dynamite, which makes perfect sense since it's grenades. Uh, I think I like it. Yeah. I mean, what's kind of weird to me is that it's not ranged at all. Like it says ranged, but it's you know it's not. You can't actually do it on another uh, space. Well, sure, but that's all firearms. Uh, well, but dynamite blast you can do on a dynamite blast can be connected locations, and marksmanship can be used with range mm -hmm. to uh, throw this. Unfortunately, the damage would still be to invest, uh, investigators and enemies at your location, and dealing two damage <laughs> to each <laughs> other investigator at your location sounds kind of like the opposite of guardian to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's funny. That sure you could use marksmanship to. You're always in cover. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess you're not warning your teammates. Oh. Uh, yeah, great solo card. <laughs> well, you or, don't have to worry about that. So I could see this in like a Zoe who uses taunt. Um, so you taunt all the enemies to you, everyone else moves away, and then you drop some grenades. Taunt's only on your turn, is it not? Is it only on your turn? I can't I believe remember. believe so. Mm. Um, I think so. Yeah. Or, I mean, you right. can also use um, taunt your shortcut. Handle, or uh, <laughs> like, let me handle this. Um, mm -hmm. If you're playing with a Finn, Finn can go first and just evade them and, mm -hmm. and leave. Um, and I mean, there are plenty of times when your teammate would probably be happy to take two damage to get both of the enemies that are on it. That's on true. That person off like, like, it's not actually that big a punishment. If it's going to do a bunch of splash damage to a bunch of enemies, probably worth it. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of uh, Norman recently, and I'm with Storm of Spirits as my main uh, weapon. If your role in the party is to be the guy that handles enemies so that other people don't take damage, and your resolution, or your manner of resolving that is to deal damage to everyone else, I kind of feel like you're not doing your job. Well, I mean, okay, if your role in the party is to <laughs> kill enemies so no one takes damage, but what if your role in the party is just to kill enemies at all costs? That's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the greater good. Could, yeah, that could... <laughs> in the course of the chaos. Uh-huh. Um, it causes union and disillusion within the party. <laughs> mm-hmm. I tentatively like this. Also, the fact that it takes no slot. I mm. think the secret name Means. for this is uh, not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm eager to try this. Mm. I think it's pretty cool. The fact that this can do... With two enemies, it's doing, doing four damage. Mm. It's six if you count <laughs> your yeah, friend yeah. at the scene. Mm -hmm. But um, And it also... I'm, I'm, I'm rereading this. You can target the weakest enemy, and as long as you're successful, it does its damage to all enemies at the location, which is also cool. So you only mm -hmm. have to test against the lowest combat yeah, so of an enemy at the location. Yeah, so experiences like that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I guess my point was just, I found that generally my party members, if I succeed in killing everything with Storm of Spirits, they don't care that much if they take the damage. Of course, sometimes you draw an auto-fail and you damage them all. And you don't do any damage. <laughs> um, so this is actually the opposite of Storm of Spirits. So Storm of Spirits... Uh, you can uh, you can fail like failing auto fail for example mm -hmm. does the damage to your party and no damage to the monsters. Mm -hmm. yep. This one only damages your party if it also damages the monsters. Right, and uh, so mm -hmm. if you if you throw this at someone with a monster on them and you fail, you're just going to do like one damage to them as if you punched them. It looks like that seems failed normal attack. Yeah, yeah I guess not yeah. too bad. Yep. Yep. Okay. I like it. It's going in my uh, sniper rolling deck. Uh -huh. Yeah, because there's enough bad cards in there. Why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Casey, want to give us the next one? Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, I just I just saw uh, it. Bringing out the big guns. Yeah. Uh, agency backup level five guardian asset cost seven ally agency traded uh, with willpower intellect and combat pips. Uh, agency backup may be assigned damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location. Fast. Uh, exhaust agency backup and deal one damage to it. Deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Fast. Exhaust agency backup and deal a horror to it. Discover one clue at your location. Uh, I suppose the important part is it has four health and four sanity. Occupies the ally slot. Uh, so when people talk about like big splashy cards, a seven cost <laughs> ally that can you know discover four clues or deal four uh, damage to enemies at your location uh, is probably that style of card. And, and it can do 
what four clues and yeah you don't have damage, to yeah you don't have right? to just burn through the whole thing in one in it's one not, uh, so you know, style. dare I say this is what Leo uh, burns his investments for. <laughs> Bring him anxiety. Yeah, we're talking mm-hmm. about investments being good for saving up for that expensive card you yep. just never have the money for. Um, yeah, this is this is that one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, uh, it looks awesome. It looks like a way better version of Brother Xavier, but I can't remember the last time I had seven resources as a guardian. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why I think like Leo with his access to um, rogue cards, maybe. Uh, right. making investments. Um, there you go. And then maybe if you're using uh, the new Tommy Gun 3, uh, you kind of get your money back. Mm-hmm. So It's true. It helps to save game. up. Yeah. If you're not trying to use like well-maintained and use that money to play it out again. Yeah. Um, the, the real tragedy here, though, is that uh, Carolyn cannot take this. So Because she could just like heal, heal the board off it. it. And then, you know, Carolyn tends to be pretty rich, so I don't think she would have a problem right. paying for this. If you're a guardian um, with access to this, though, you can already get Inspiring Presence first mm-hmm. aid if you really care to. Yeah. The upgraded first aid can heal allies. Uh, hmm. Yeah, and what's Beat Cop cost? Four? Yeah. Four. It can do three this, damage over its life without healing. Yeah, like for its price, this looks quite a bit better than Beat Cop, even, even Beat Cop 2 also. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little less than double the cost for a lot more than double the punch. Um, it's... <sighs> It's daunting. Luckily, it's got pretty solid icons. I guess it's slightly worse than if it just had a wild icon. <laughs> but it always looks impressive when there's three different icons on there and it's not actually as good as it looks. Um, I feel like committing this would feel pretty bad. It was a 5XP card. <laughs> so. uh, committing it for would, a single icon. Committing it would feel a lot better than it sitting in your hand for the whole game, mm-hmm. unable to be played. Uh, I think it's cool. Five level five cards are always tricky because you get so little playtime with them. Like by the time you find five XP to spend on something like this, the campaign's almost over. It's uh, I feel like it's going to be a while before I get this into a deck, and a while longer before I figure out whether it's any good. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely cool. Yeah, I mean, I, there might be some like solo guardians that are really built around this, and you just try to get five XP in the first scenario and take it immediately. Like I could see mm-hmm. like a Leo that's like, you know what, I'm gonna, you know, maybe I'll take some clue cards. You know, for the first scenario, but I'm after the first scenario, I'm just going to rely on agency backup to get all my clues. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, being able to get four clues in true solo is like yeah. that's half the game <laughs> right there. So, so that's true. That that could be real strong. Um, okay, I like it. You need uh, a rich survivor to take the uh, chance encounter level two. There mm-hmm. we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or when you get two agency backups, you have one calling more backup. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's what they would do, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Steven, want to take us into Seeker? Hey, it's, right. it's not a leveled up card. We're at the end of the cycle. I expect every card to pretty much be like super expensive XP. But... All right, so okay. it's a zero cost event, two book icons, ghastly revelation to spirit uh, type events. Uh, mm-hmm. Discover three <laughs> clues at your location, hmm. give any number of clues to another investigator, or place any number of your clues on any location. You are defeated and suffer one mental trauma. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Uh, oh, wow. I was, as you were reading this, I was like, when is the other shoe going to drop? It's zero cost, it's level zero, and discovers three <laughs> clues at your location. Um, okay, this is, um, is it not without a fight? What is the guardian card that defeats yourself? Uh, see you in hell. Up? See you in hell, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. This is Seeker, see you in hell. Pretty so, much. This is outstanding, I think. You think so? Uh, yeah, I, I think being able to, uh, as a uh, seeker like this class, uh, you probably want to take a mental trauma rather than get bogged down with enemies. So being able to hand off all of your, you know, the clues you've collected, or if you're on a VP location or something that needs to be investigated to resolve the scenario, saying, okay, I'm going to defeat myself at the cost of one mental trauma, which your seeker, you probably got more sanity than health anyways. Mm-hmm. So you dump all the clues on a location that either has low shroud or just hand them off to someone else. You're out of the game. You're not lowering your health total for the next scenario, assuming there is one. Uh, it's got really good icons as well. Uh, Calvin loves it because it's power <laughs> up Calvin. Yeah, so can Calvin take spirit? He can. He can take have, spirit yeah. zero through three, um, which this is. Uh, Roland, seeker access, doesn't care about it. I don't think... Uh, any of the, uh, you probably like your, you know, your uh, daisies and such, Rex maybe, assuming that Rex has <laughs> trouble getting clues. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's your more uh, clue-focused investigators that just want to get this to make sure that the work that they've been doing throughout the scenario continues and, you know, pays off. 
Yeah, so the investigator you're giving clues to doesn't even have to be at your location, huh? Mm -mm. They can... Anywhere, or you can just dump it anywhere. Yeah, just being <clears throat> able to, when you're about to be defeated anyway, being able to transfer your clues would mm -hmm. almost be good enough to put in a in your deck late in the campaign. Um, mm -hmm. And w without the discover three clues on it, to then also get three <clears throat> clues regardless of Shroud. I, I agree. This looks great. Mm -hmm. So my question though is like I've never been remotely tempted to put also you and hell on a deck. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I I tend to not like plan for failure in that way. <laughs> sure. I agree. Um, I think you probably want to win. So not assume your deck is going to win, but focus on the scenario going mm -hmm. well. So I my natural inclination is like to do the same. Like I'm just never going to think about this because I'm going to try to survive. Mm -hmm. Now maybe that's wrong. Um, it just yeah, it's not it's not normally my inclination to be like yeah like yeah. I'll put this card in my deck just in case I'm about to die, and then I'll play it. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and it, I consider I See You in Healthy one of my favorite cards that I never play. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> For yeah. that reason, I'm so glad it exists. It actually seems quite strong mm -hmm. in the right situations, but when am I actually going to put it in a deck? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> like, what would be cool, what mm -hmm. would get me to definitely play this, and ah, maybe it would be overpowered, but if it said, like, fast reaction, when you are defeated, play this, discover three clues at your location, then give... To Sounds someone like else, like then yeah. I would definitely, you know, put like consider putting this in a deck. Mm -hmm. um, but this you would have to preemptively, you know, I've been at plenty of games where I'm at like one health or one mm -hmm. sanity, and I'm I'm still trying to survive, you know. I agree, um, but sometimes choosing the way you go out is what matters rather than the actual, you know, successfully resolving the scenario. I was in. Um, Witching Hour uh, is Leo, and the clock was running out, and if the clock runs out, you wind up with another weakness in your deck, and mm -hmm. the board was filling up, uh, we were not going to be able to clear it or clear the location, and I had a Dynamite Blast in my hand. <laughs> and I said, alright, come meet me here, we're going to Dynamite Blast, take that physical trauma, we're knocked out, we avoid the weakness, you know, we were both the Guardians, so, you know, lower health total is alright. And I think this is that kind of card where, you, when you have it, you're happy that you have it. Right. Uh, you don't need to necessarily build past it, but just a one of. Uh, to keep in your hand, and again, it's your your principal skill uh, icons showing up on the card. So if it's not the sort of scenario where you know the clock might run out, or you know with a really severe punishment, you just play it as a skill. It's true with the two intellect icons. You can it's like this versus perception in your mm -hmm. deck. Would you trade off that card draw that potential card draw to have mm -hmm. this flexibility to use this awesome in the right situation mm -hmm. ability? Like actually, yeah. Definitely, I will say definitely much better when it's not a blind playthrough. So like, if you sure, know agree. the consequence of defeat, yeah. mm -hmm. you might be like, oh, I'm in a two victory point location, mm -hmm. I'll trade a trauma for two victory Absolutely. points for the entire group. Yeah. Like, that's a totally reasonable decision. Mm -hmm. um, in a blind playthrough, sometimes you just, your character's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, a permanent card is next, Studious. It is a level three talent that yeah has no resource cost because it's permanent you begin the game excuse me you begin each game with one additional card in your opening hand three xp to get a sixth card in your hand um seems good i mean it's hmm i'm not actually sure i like it what do you think uh it's uh it seems okay it's seekers doing what they do um Assuming you, you could invest in this instead of card draw events or whatever, if there was something very specific that you build around, maybe uh, Min trying to increase uh, her chances of getting her signature asset out, um, you know, because that directly contributes to her playstyle. I'm not sure that the other Seekers necessarily feel that way. Uh, even, you know, the, our most recent one, Joe, getting this, he doesn't really care about his guns. <laughs> <In> likelihood, <laughs> he's got so much okay. other ac access to card draw. Uh, it's nice that it's just passive, you just... You spend three XP and go, uh, and it, it lets you look at two cards because I'm assuming that you can mulligan the card that you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best part of that's, this. Yeah, right. the strongest part would be total of two extra cards you're looking at. Yeah, I mean, I, I think why, as I thought about this, why I immediately didn't like it as much is because it's <laughs> it would be very similar to if it just said like you get an additional action the first turn of the game to mm -hmm. draw a card, and that must be used to draw a card, yeah. like, and mm -hmm. that would be it, and that would feel very weak. You're right. The fact that you get to mulligan it is a little stronger. Uh, it does also specifically help with tarot cards. I was gonna say, yeah, mm -hmm. if if you're running those, you know, if you're playing Joe and maybe you're playing the Seeker and the Guardian Tarot's or something, mm -hmm. you might consider it. Um, in terms of raw efficiency, 
uh, for one XP less, it's substantially less powerful than Cryptic Research mm -hmm. because Cryptic Research is you're spending one card to draw three, so it's a net gain of two and it's fast. So mm -hmm. it's essentially the same speed as this. Um, whereas this, for one less XP, you're getting basically half the uh, the card advantage. Mm -hmm. Crypto can Crypto also go reason. around the table. And Crypto can go on other people. Yeah. So yeah. I think the mulligan part would be the main reason to do it. Mm -hmm. So like maybe if you are playing a deck that really doesn't want to draw its weaknesses, mm -hmm. um, and you just want to try to mulligan into the cards you need and then not draw much, maybe? Mm -hmm. Like if you have Doom. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think I like the card because, and we talked about this when we talked about the taboo list a few uh, a few review episodes ago. Mm -hmm. I think that this is one of the weakest permanent cards, and yeah. that is a good thing because permanent cards are overpowered. Yeah, in yeah. general, yeah. <laughs> we uh, we saw a lot of them hit the taboo list, and I think other ones should have or are next in line for it, like charisma. They're just so strong, just for a few XP, and then you never have to think about them again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that this is a weaker, but still interesting, especially in certain decks or um, with tarot cards, card like I like it. I think it's at a at a good sweet spot. Who knows? Maybe I'm maybe I'm completely mis misunderestimating completely <laughs> underestimating it, and it'll be uh, ridiculously strong, and it'll be an auto buy for anyone who can take it. But I could see that happening. But at a glance, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, Casey, you want to take us into Rogue? Sure, I will do you such a favor. A uh, small favor, <laughs> uh, Rogue event, level zero. Uh, two combat icons, favor or service traded. Deal one damage to a non-elite enemy at your location. Response, when you play small favor, increase its cost by two. Change deal one damage to deal two damage. Uh, another response, mm -hmm. when you play small favor, increase its cost by two. Change at your location to at a location up to two locations away. So I've said this about every favorite card. I still can't believe they didn't keyword this, and I hate the templating on this card. I'll shut up about that now. <laughs> but what do you think, Stephen? Uh, so you know, I think the like the last one, the evade one. You, know, mm -hmm. you have to compare that to the survivor event that evades everything. Um, I'm forgetting the name right now. Oh, kind of distraction. Sure. This one, I think you have to compare to sneak attack. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, compared to sneak attack. Uh, I think co think that costs two, but the level mm -hmm. zero version, that person has to be evaded. Yeah. So this one does not require an evasion uh, for four costs for two damage. Mm -hmm. um, it also can do other locations for six cost um, or four costs if you only need to do one damage. So definitely a lot, like a lot more flexibility than sneak attack, mm -hmm. um, but you're trading a little bit of the raw efficiency and that sneak attack can potentially do two damage uh, for mm -hmm. uh, just two cost. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, unless you're a very evasion heavy, um, I think I probably like this better so you don't have to evade. But you're always planning on paying four for it. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, oh, actually, sorry, that's not true. There's some nasty one co one uh, hit point enemies like Whipwolves. There are, system. but there's also such a card as a Coup de Gras. Sure, mm -hmm. but I immediately think... down it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Coup de Gras doesn't do it. You have to do it at the end of your turn. It ends your turn. You can do it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I think, you know, if I'm going to Whipperwell heavy mm -hmm. scenario, I probably slightly prefer this mm -hmm. so that I'm not, I don't have that minus one when I'm investigating before the Coup de Gras, for example. Fair enough. Um, so. Hmm. I, I love the flavor of this card, that um, mm -hmm. you're basically calling in a hitman to like kill something for you, and it's a small favor, because that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's either how rich you are or what, what standing you have with like organized crime mm -hmm. in the city. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is the least exciting of the favors. The other, it, this was inevitable. Like I practically could have told, like predicted this card word for word mm -hmm. uh, after we got basically the same thing for discover clues and evade enemies. Like, mm -hmm. What does that leave? Yeah. We're going to get one for damage. But... It's definitely the least impactful. Like, discovering two clues is quite strong and moves the game forward. Mm -hmm. Evading one or two enemies is pretty powerful, gets you out of a jam, um, and lets you either survive longer or do your next trick to take them out. Mm -hmm. This, though, dealing one or maybe two damage just feels weak. Well, and what if there's one or two hit points remaining after your telescopic sight <laughs> hits them? Yeah, that's oh, galaxy that's, brain right there. That's true. This um, for, for the low, low cost of the four resources that you have <laughs> yeah, left after playing. On top of your two-handed gun and, a, and your, sky, your scope. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, I don't see sitting on a whole lot of money in the deck that is <laughs> <laughs> that is sniping for reasons I've already Leo. discussed. But <laughs> um, hmm. yeah, love the flavor. I love the fact that there's two icons on it anytime or two matching icons. Mm -hmm. That lets me kind of overlook that a card is a little weaker than mm -hmm. you'd like anytime that you, it could also be used for a double icon. But mm, not like I definitely I still haven't played Preston. I know you've played him a, a good amount. I think you have too. I've played him. Yeah. I definitely want to play him and just try to kind of play him, trying out like all the cards from the cycle, the money talks, everything that's big money and all these favors, just to kind of just try out the Preston suite. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that this would be one of the lowlights of the deck. This can take out the cultists on uh, Essex County. <laughs> definitely pretty, uh, True. pretty good. Yeah, that, that is a good point. There's some situations where it would be yeah. absolutely clutch to do damage remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you get to do a lot. It is but. also weird that it's to a non-elite enemy. I think pretty much every other damage event can affect elite enemies. Because they have so much HP anyway, that like being able to do one or two damage to them is not like overpowered. Good point. It's a little... Yeah, that's a little strange because this would barely put a dent in most elite enemies. Yeah. Hmm. So, I, I don't think that was necessary. They, I guess they did that to be consistent with the Evade Woman, but um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of an odd writer that, that hurts its value even a little more. Mm hmm. hmm. Okay, moving on. What do we got, Steven? All right. Oh, another permanent. Another day, another taller. <laughs> Great name. Uh, three XP. Uh, it's a talent permanent. <laughs> and it's got a guy, like a prisoner who's paying off a, looks like a magician or something with a deck of cards. <laughs> Those are uh, cigarettes. Oh, cigarettes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is permanently going to be a magician in my mind now. Thank you for that. Yeah, well, it is permanent. So... Um, and you begin each game with two additional resources. Oh, it's anti-indebted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spend three, cancel a weakness. Yeah, I mean, if there was a permanent that said cancel any weakness, like, I would probably pay, like, five XP for that. So, you know, certainly when you have indebted, you would want this. <laughs> <laughs> when you have indebted and when you're a rogue. <laughs> yeah. You three XP to spare. Um... I think at a glance I like this better than, I have already forgotten the name of the last permanent we looked oh, at. Oh yes, Studious. Studious. I think I like it better if only because it just has like twice the action yep. gain. Um, even though I, if you don't benefit from the, um, you don't benefit from Mulligan advantage mm -hmm. here. And also just resources at the start of the game are so clutch for your setup turn. As opposed to an extra card, I guess is important for setting up in its own way, but not as... Like, you usually have kind of a tableau that you're like, at a minimum, I want these two assets in play. And they usually add up to a lot of the time more than five. Totally. So just, just starting with two more seems real good to me. I think I'm going to play this card quite a bit. I agree. I feel like Emergency Cash, like, half its value comes from its, like, turn one effectiveness. Like, yeah. Seekers, for example. Crack the Case is just straight up better than Emergency Cash in almost every turn except for the first turn. Yep. But Emergency Cash is so good on your first turn to let you play, say, a fingerprint kit and a Milan. Um, you know, that having two extra dollars in my setup, mm -hmm. I think I would probably just cut cash from my decks. Um, Interesting. In some cases. Um, maybe you put in investments, because it's, you know, you have this as your short term, and then you have investments as your long term. Mm -hmm. I think its strength is in its, you know, like, not non-interactivity, but the fact that, you know, you spend three, and that's it. Like, maybe, like you say, that is the, your resource engine for the rest of the game. Or if you're Jenny, you're like... You know, start with seven, and I pick up two on each turn. What do I need to take the resource action, or what do I need to buy a hot streak for? Yeah. Um, one other thought that popped in my head, and I think I it, this didn't occur to me when we were looking at Studious, but um, this isn't unique. It's not exceptional. You can have two of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, then you then you could really start cutting your caches. And start stuff. the game with nine resources, start the game with seven cards in hand on Studious. Um, it's six XP, but that's starting to feel pretty nuts. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. All right, moving into purple with, uh, okay, let's get this right, Diana Esperance. Did that seem, anyone have any corrections on pronunciation? Esperance? It's probably all right. Okay, sure. Uh, she deals with quote-unquote devils. <laughs> uh, it's a, she's a level three, four cost mystic ally asset. She's also a witch. Uh, she uses three secrets and then says, as a fast action, attach a non-weakness spell event from your hand to her. Limit one at event attached to her. The attached event may be played as if it were in your hand. It is not placed in your discard pile after it is played. It remains attached. As an, 
as an additional cost to play the attached event, exhaust her and spend one secret. Oh, it's there's a card in Magic the Gathering, I think it was called Isochron Scepter, where you can take an instant from your hand, uh, which is a quick spell in, the, in that game, um, attach it to it, and then use it over and over. This is that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, oh, and she has three health and one sanity, which is interesting for Mystic Ally to be, uh, to be that buff. Casey, what are, uh, what's your first reaction? Uh, I think it's outstanding. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, right. I, I, I think uh, if there's a Mystic in the party, then probably at some point they will be upgrading to this. Uh, I think the extra wards, uh, you know, there's a ton of... Ward is uh, a great one. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Well, yeah, extra wards, uh, there's a ton of extra protection for the table. Uh, the fact that she's three health and one sanity, most of the, actually, I believe, all of the Mystics are... Uh, Sanity uh, <laughs> weighted, uh, so you appreciate having the extra health. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons why Renfield is so powerful. Or so yes. appreciated is the two health, one sanity. Agreed on that. Yeah, uh, secrets can be replenished either yep. by, uh, uh, I believe, what is it? There's uh, enraptured. Guys. Well, they're oh, enraptured. There's an yeah. ally that helps too, right? A secret ally. Although I guess then you're talking about combining allies, so maybe that's not that appealing. Uh, no, as a right, event. I don't believe anything. Truth from right. fiction. Truth from fiction replaces or adds secrets to a card you control. Yep. So if you mm. traded her away, <laughs> no, 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 then so she could be replenished. No, you control her, so you can use truth from fiction to put secrets on her. If you're truth like from Daisy. Fiction, yeah. Well, no, Daisy can't get Mystic three. Mm -hmm. No, no, but like uh, Marie, for example, and Marie Norm, could, uh, yeah. and Norman both can do it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, um, so a couple couple things. Mm -hmm. One. All the Circle Undone cards that require an Exhausted Witch, do they say enemy? Or can you exhaust her? <laughs> oh, have to double check that. <laughs> that is a great question. So, and one that I really wish I could get the answer <laughs> to right now on the spot. But. That would be fun if this worked on that. Yes, it would. Um, some other notes. Uh, doesn't really work with uh, Delve Too Deep because it will no longer be attached. Yeah, it would go in your victory um, display. Been to max two, anyways. So <laughs> unless you're one of those particular troll builds, yeah, people don't really appreciate the, all the extra cards. Oh, but yeah, this seems great. It doesn't have a stat boost on it, which is always one downside to, to certain allies. But by mid campaign, most of the Mystic assets are boosting themselves anyway. That's true. And Mystics only need to boost one stat, so it's easy enough to find. If, if you were going for a spill build. Yeah. And I, I yeah. tend to, I actually really like Charisma in some of my Mystic builds, mm -hmm. um, so that you can get, say, an Arcane Initiate and a Renfield, um, like that's great in Marie, um, so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe yeah. you take double Charisma in <laughs> Diana, um, or, you know, maybe you overwrite uh, Renfield with it and then mm -hmm. you get rid of the Doom anyway. Um, oh, another note with this, um, somewhat of an anti-combo with the other Diana, because, um, you know, if you put it under Diana, then it's not under Diana. Uh, which oh. is not confusing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Diana and Diana, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. That was my first thought uh, when I saw her was play her in Diana and cancel three things with her. But you're right, that doesn't work that way because you would take the card mm -hmm. off of Diana <laughs> mm -hmm. when you do that. Mm, okay. Um, okay, that, yeah, that's, that cuts, sets it back a little bit because I was actually thinking that that would work mm -hmm. and that deny existence or something on here, which I think I'd prefer to ward because you wouldn't take... I hit one or two horror every time you, you repeat mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, it wouldn't work with her specifically. But like, I, like I have a Norman right now, mm -hmm. um, and I could totally see putting this in to reuse Storm of Spirits and Ward of Protection. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, and then I could even add uh, Truth of Fiction um, to, to reboost the Truth. We haven't talked yeah. about it. it. can be a spell from any class. So, you know, assuming you can get to Mystic 3 or trade her to someone else. You know, we might start. Saying. Are there any non Mystic spell events? I know there's spell like yeah. suggestions on an event. Suggestion is not an event, right? Oh, yeah. At some um, point. Blood maybe. Ritual's an event, right? Oh, but oh the, the new one? Yeah. But mm, <laughs> it's not a good card. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you'll kill yourself if you play that three times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Blood Eclipse, yeah. Blood Eclipse, thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. <laughs> uh, Steven, is it to you? Hey, speak of the devil. Hey. <laughs> So Deny Existence 5, mm -hmm. uh, it's a level 5, um, event, spell, paradox, uh, fast, uh, play when an encounter card or enemy attack would cause you to do one of the following, discard cards, lose resources, lose actions, take damage or take horror, so far d identical to the original mm -hmm. Deny Existence. You ignore that aspect of this effect, then perform the opposite of that aspect, draw cards, gain resources, gain additional actions, heal damage, or heal horror, respectively. <laughs> 
Uh, that's pretty fun. I, it is fun. I love this design that it, it not only cancels something, but it flips it on its head yeah. and you benefit from it. Super cool. I've said on here already that Deny Existence is one of the strongest cards in the game, I think, mm -hmm. and is basically an auto-include unless you have a good reason not to. Yep. Um, and this is obviously even better. Whether it's worth five mm -hmm. experience to level up when it's already going to be one of the best cards in your deck, uh, I think there are probably bigger improvements to your deck you can make with that five XP. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, I think it's the second winner in the pack for Mystics. Uh, oh. It's definitely expensive, but if you're running the uh, Arcane, Arcane Research, research yep. yeah, uh, to lower the uh, mm -hmm. XP investment, uh, it's amazing. Uh, Carolyn can take it because it actually heals horror, uh, <laughs> for those that oh. don't care. She can take the other one because it's level zero as well. Uh, so, I think that extra, like, heal basically your whole health bar mm -hmm. <laughs> effect is maybe... Uh, you know, you. I think the strength of the card is already in the level zero version. Yeah. Of just canceling mm -hmm. any amount of horror, yeah. any amount of damage, and no losing, cost. Yeah, yeah. With no cost besides the card. Yeah. Uh, to do the opposite of that, I don't think drawing five cards blindly <laughs> is necessarily that powerful. <laughs> uh, it's cool that you can do it. Um, yeah, definitely some of these are only situational things, like even benefits, like heal mm -hmm. damage or heal horror. At the time that you want to cancel an effect, you might not actually mm -hmm. have the capacity to benefit from it. Yeah. Drawing cards may or may not be something you actually want to do in a given moment. Two of them, gaining resources and gaining actions, are basically always good, yeah. but are also the things that, the effects that are the least common among these, so you'd be less least likely to cancel a yeah. lose resources and or a lose actions effect. Lose actions tends to be like one or two actions. It's rarely three. Like if, if you got a lot of lose three actions in this card, it'd be amazing. <laughs> it, it, I think even canceling lose one or two actions and getting a four or five action turn uh, can justify using this card. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's a super fun design. I love this card exists. It's hard to see spending all this XP. So. Do you think it's finally worth Carolyn taking Arcane Research? There's only a couple <laughs> cards she can use it on. She can use it on this. She can use it on Clarity of Mind. Um, is there anything else she can use it on? Um, the fact that she practically benefits from the mental trauma. Exactly. Because... <laughs> There's not a lot of cost other than it's one of your 15 uh, yeah. Mystic and right. You're slots. trading this, these slots for the yeah. XP. Yeah. Sure. As well as the trauma, but <laughs> but the trauma, yeah, the trauma is almost good because it, it gives you something easy to well, heal. Yeah. The one thing though is to benefit. Correct me if I'm wrong. To benefit from arcane research, you have to be upgrading from the lower level version of the spell, yeah. right? Yeah. Which Carolyn can't take. Oh no, no sorry. You just take one of her slots. That's right. Yeah. I was thinking because You're that one using more heal slots. Or, yeah. Okay. To save the XP. Hmm. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's worth a try if I'm uh, sitting on a bunch of XP with Caroline. It depends on what the rest of the build is, probably. Uh -huh. How much those slots really matter. Um, but yeah, I would say Diana can definitely take uh, Arcane Research. Uh, I did it in my Diana build, mm -hmm. um, so I think I would have put this in by the end. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, Diana can also make use of this like two or three times, so mm -hmm. yes. know, why not spend five XP on it? True. Yeah, upgrading her cancel cards because it's so core to her, yeah. her mm -hmm. game plan anyway. Diana or Diana, so yeah. Yeah, no matter which one <laughs> Diana, right. you can use this three times. All right. Uh, survivors get Trial by Fire, a spirit event that costs three. It says fast play only during your turn. Choose one of your skills. Until the end of your turn, set the base value of that skill to five. You never really know what you are capable of until something is trying to eat you. It's, it's a good line. <laughs> uh, Steven, what do, what do we think of this? I feel like this should have a picture of Preston on it because it is mm. totally a Preston card. Yes. Paying, nuts. paying three to boost your stat by four, for the, and it's fast, mm -hmm. that just seems amazing. Um, it's also pretty good in Calvin, because Calvin would get his boosts on top of the five, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I think you would consider it in Calvin. It's definitely a little expensive for him, mm -hmm. but might be worth it for a crazy turn, but certainly Preston. Yeah, I agree. I think those cases where you have um, weird investigators with super low base stats, this makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I am not sure it compares favorably to Will to Survive, which just lets you skip drawing a Chaos Token and is a yeah. pretty damn good Although boost. you wouldn't be surprised by how many times Rita with Will to Survive like still needs a lot of help to <laughs> get clues. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a good point. <laughs> what do you think, Casey? It's a pricey card, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm not excited to see in a class that's not traditionally wealthy. I know people are talking about drawing thin shenanigans. Uh, we don't need to do that now. <laughs> um, 
Setting a skill to five, it's only on your turn. Uh, yeah, if uh, if you've got a way, well, think of it. If you have an off skill, how much of your deck is built around using some using that skill consistently or for a prolonged period of time? Um, I mean, I would yeah, say like not much, but like well, go ahead. I, I, Rita probably devotes like six or seven mm -hmm. cards to uh, clue generation. Mm -hmm. um, this might be more efficient than some of them. I mean, it costs only one more than Look What I Found. Now, Look What I Found already finds two clues, so maybe it's better than setting your intellect to five. Okay, but, but then you're only testing at base five. You likely don't have any other boosts, or if, unless you have those in addition to this. Mm -hmm. What about putting this in something like... Um, well, I was going to say Shotgun Zoe, but Zoe already hit. It's only a plus one to a combat. Like, something where you're going to just guarantee that you hit on every uh, on every action and deal out a crazy amount of damage and just kill a boss. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking Dunwich Investigators because they can all take this, obviously, because it's a level zero card. Um, then she could just spend two off of Keen Eye to get two co or one combat for the rest of the round anyways. Mm, good point. Yeah, cursing permanent cards. Yeah. I mean, I guess Min could take the uh, card that makes it so you don't reveal skill tokens, and then set something to five. Uh, the, oh, the Narcotic, Narcotic Manuscripts. manuscripts. Yeah. Hmm. Though I think that takes actions, right? So, that takes an action to set up mm -hmm. each time you use it, unless yeah, you use the so response. Yeah, it's not great with a... No. Yeah. Hmm. Turn limited one. All right, um, it's interesting. If it was... If it like cost one less or bumped base value to six or something, I think this would be great in a lot of situations. It's right on the line where it might yeah. it might just be I mean, and kind of. I've never personally done it, but like survivors have that on your own card that like mm -hmm. reduces the cost of events by two. Um, yeah. So maybe there's an on your own that's, trial by fire build. It's a real bad card though. So in <laughs> mid campaign, having dropped six XP to reduce the cost of your trial by fire turns. <laughs> also denying oh. yourself access to allies or just not playing them. Yeah. Uh, I think that's investing a yeah. lot in a turn where you're using the skill that you're bad at. <laughs> All right, enough about this one. Uh, Casey? Oh, this is, this is a classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was not expecting that. No. Uh, oldie but a goodie, maybe. Uh, bait and switch level three. Hmm. Uh, survivor uh, event, one cost. Tactic traded, uh, intellect and two agility pips. Either choose one. Evade. If you succeed and the enemy is non-elite, evade the enemy and move it to a connecting location. Or evade. Use only on a non-elite enemy at a connecting location. If you succeed, evade that enemy and switch locations with it. <laughs> okay, I've got to confess. I don't really remember what the original bait and switch did. Did it basically do this first bullet point? Yes, I believe it was limited to that. Okay. And the fact that we all st apparently struggle to remember it is probably a testament to its lack of <laughs> yeah. uh, quality. Because was this this was corset? Done it. Done it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's old. I'm not sure I ever put it in a deck. Yeah. Might have a place in Sniper Mark. I, mean, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, yeah, can Mark do all levels of tactics? All levels, all as long as they're zero. Uh, yeah, so he can just do the basic one. So he can't oh. do this. And he also has five combat and two. I mean, like, if you really were all about evading, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, mm. Mm, pretty impressive icons. It's unusual to have, like, one of one stat and two of another stat. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. I think, I think this could be really fun. I like the idea of switching locations... With an enemy, what you could um, we need a time bomb card or something, or if there's a location that you know is going to explode or something. <laughs> I was just speaking. oh uh, Essex. Yeah, there well, you go. <laughs> you can't leave a location with as long as it's got clues. On yeah, it, you right? have to get pick up all the clues before you use this. Um, but that's but an if there's an idea. adjacent uh, cultist or something, then you can swap yeah. with them. Speaking of bombs, you could use this to both uh, put an enemy into the Guardian's location when they're about to throw a grenade <laughs> and get yourself out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you could get up to some hijinks if you really wanted to do some weird build-around stuff, but mm -hmm. <laughs> generally I think still this is a card for the binder. Most mm. likely. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One last card in the pack. It's a neutral. Steven, what do we got? All right. Anna Caslow, uh, the, the, who's the fortune teller from the uh, prologue for, uh, or not the prologue, the like story text for Circle Undone. Uh, three costs, four XP, uh, ally and clairvoyant. Uh, you have two additional tarot slots. When the game begins, if Anna Caslow is in your hmm. opening hand, put her into play. 
And after Anna Kaslow enters play, search your deck for a tarot asset and put it into play. Oh, wow. This is, this oh. is hard to evaluate. <laughs> Only one hit point and one sanity. Mm -hmm. Oh, true. So you lose her if something deals one damage or one horror to your allies. You lose the extra like slots. Yeah. Right. Now, are all of the tarot's uh, non-unique? They are all non-unique, yes. Okay. So you can do, you can just have like the standard, say, two guardian tarot's um, and she could fetch, uh, you could start with one and she fetches the other or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh man, I'm having a hard time but, figuring out whether this is any good or not. <laughs> Uh, it really enables a very different kind of build. With as far, the tarot cards have always been like, at least to me, maybe a one or two of, of one of them, and just hope you get it. This really does make you want to stack, probably more than just two of them, so that you're more likely to get two of them. Yeah, well, you I, need access I, to multiple classes or leveled cards in multiple classes to really this, benefit. It's the most competitive slot being an ally. She's fragile, as you said. That is true. Um, and then you're investing further in the tarot cards themselves. And she's a lot more XP than just adding another copy of a tarot card if you're just trying to increase your density of getting mm -hmm. them. Hmm. She's actually not horrible to use with the tower weakness. I was going to just get it out of your deck. I was just thinking that just as a way, like you would buy another day, another dollar because you're indebted. <laughs> maybe buy this if you have the, the tower. Mm -hmm. Then you spend three cards and or three resources and four XP. Yeah, for your but, opening turn to get rid of, well, to avoid spending four. No, you hope to get it in your opening hand. That's the tarot? No, she she's, starts. Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah, She starts in play. So she's not three resources if you draw her. I, um, hmm. I think she's bad. I, I like I like her, but... Mm -hmm. I think the additional tarot slots thing is kind of a trap. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. try to get three tarots out because she's going to die and then two of them get discarded. Mm -hmm. I think that the searching for a tarot is not terrible. Um, just kind of makes it more reliable, increases the chance that you get it in your opening hand. Um, so, and, and maybe if you had like, I don't know, like one of each uh, tarot, like the fact that you can pick which one. So like uh, if you're Safina mm -hmm. and like you particularly need Will in this scenario, you get the Will one. If you particularly need Agility, you get the Agility one. It makes it a bit better than just an extra copy of one of those. Um, yeah. It's not amazing, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. If you really wanted to, uh, like, if you're playing Calvin and really want to make sure you get that, like, plus health and sanity or something, mm -hmm. <laughs> late in the campaign, you can pour XP into this so that you can be a little more survival with that. But, yeah. Another, it's tricky to see use cases. Another advantage this does have over another copy of the tarot is it does have a wild icon. So if you find it late mm. and you don't want to pay for it, uh, it's not as useless as like finding that extra copy that's that's true. of Taros. Um So like, if you were just like had tons of XP, and maybe Calvin will be like this because some of the survivors just like don't really need that much XP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this, spending three uh, XP for this instead of a second copy of your main tarot, um, it's not as it, the, the skull icon is useful. Right. Um. Okay. Well, that is. In the clutches of chaos. Got it. Nailed it. <laughs> um, any final thoughts on the pack, Casey? How do you... Uh, uh, well, do you guys have any uh, favorite card? Uh, I think Diana might be the yeah. most interesting. Mm -hmm. um, favorite card, I think, has to be Ghastly Revelation, even though I agree that it <laughs> is... Oh, I don't know how many times I'm really going to play it in a clutch moment and be glad I had it or even put it in a deck. I, I, I love that it exists. Um, overall, I think pretty cool pack. Uh, if, even if everything's not super strong, um, I love the packs where we get a lot of high level cards at the end of a cycle yeah. because they're just all super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're fun to read, fun to dream about putting into a deck. You're most, most of them you're not going to very often, but <laughs> it's still a lot of fun, especially, um, now that we're doing these videos and I come into these blind, <laughs> it's a lot of fun to, uh, to kind of dwell on each one and, you know, imagine that best case scenario oh, where totally. you have the XP, <laughs> put it in your deck and the stars align <laughs> and they really deliver. Um, even if that's so rarely going to happen. Yeah. All right. Should we wrap this up? Um, a lot of the time after these, we live stream. I don't think we're going to today because I think with Casey here, we're not going to continue our two-player campaign. But we are going to get a game or two filmed, so 
hopefully you enjoyed having Casey on because you'll probably see a little more of him. <laughs> if not, I apologize. He won't be here all the time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> with that, no. thank you for joining us, Casey. It was Thanks a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Steven. Fun pack to get to. Yeah. It was. Thank you as always, Steven. Of course. Thank you for watching, and until next time, be optimal.